Hey guys, uh, we're going to be covering um, ellipsis in parametric form. Um, we did circles before. If you haven't, uh, it might help just to watch the um, circle parametric form um, because yeah, it, there's a bit more explanation in that video um, because I might just be moving a little bit fast in this video. So let's get started. So, our general equation of an ellipsis x squared divided by a squared plus y squared divided by b squared equals 1. You guys should all be familiarized by this. Um, with this equation by now. Now, the parametric form of these, x will be written as a cos theta, and y will be written as b sine theta. Now, you'll notice that um, x is still cos, just like in the circles, and y is still sine, just like in circles. But notice that we no longer have the radius for an ellipse. So it's going to be the a and b um, which are going to come into play. Now, if you've forgotten what a and b are, uh, if you remember, that was a and negative a, and b were the um, were the y, the y, the two y intercepts. Yeah, so that's sorry, uh, that's that's where we're up to for this. Now I want to go to the proof and show you guys how the proof works. So let's get so let's get going. Um, we're going to use the same trig identity from circles, um, except this time I just want to, you know, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. So we're going to write up our x, which is a cos theta, and we have x divided by a equals cos theta. Now we're going to write up our y, which is b sine theta, and once again we're going to rearrange that as y over b is equal to sine theta. Now we're going to substitute this back into the uh, trig identity itself. So cos squared theta, so that's, uh, let's see, x over a squared plus sine squared theta, which is y over b squared, and that equals to 1. Expanding this out, we get x squared over a squared, plus y squared over b squared, and that equals 1. And as you can see, folks, that is our general equation of an ellipse that we already know. Okay, moving, um, moving on to the next slide. We're going to be looking at what happens when the cent if, if the center is at PQ. So let's get a ellipse there. Uh, let's mark our P. There's P right there. And we've got Q. Now, just as we did in circles, it's exactly the same. So, except, you know, instead of R, you're going to have A cos theta, and it's going to be plus P for the X parametric equation. And for the Y version, you're going to have B sine theta, and that's plus Q. That's it. So that's what I was saying. You know, if you watch the circles one, this one will be a little bit more easier. Okay, let's start doing some, um, well, changes. So we'll change from parametrics to normal general equation and then back, back and forth. So here's a set of parametric equations. We've got x equals 4 cos theta and y equals 3 sine theta. And straight away, uh, because the radius, well, because it's two different numbers for 4 and 3, we know that this is going to be an ellipse. So we're going to have x squared divided by 4 squared, because that's the value of a, plus y squared divided by 3 squared, which is the value of b, and that equals to 1. So looking at going backwards, if we have x squared over 25 plus y squared over 16, and then if that equals 1, then we know that the x coordinates for the x, well, we just write it as x, and a is square root of 25, which is 5. So it'll be 5 cos theta. And y is going to equal, well, we've got square root of 16, so it'll be 4. And that's 4 sine theta, going backwards. Okay, the next example, I'll be looking at similar ones, guys, but um, where the center is not at 0, 0. All right, so this time, we have a parametric equation, which is x is 4 cos theta plus 1, and y is 3 sine theta plus 2. So let's get started the first thing you have to realize that um, now the center is actually not at 0 0 and because if remember if you have plus p then we write it as x minus p so in this case it's plus 1 so we're going to write it as x minus 1 squared divided by a which is 4 so it'll be 4 squared plus uh, the translation uh, the movement in y is positive 2 so it's going to be y minus 2 squared and that's divided by 3 squared because that's the value of b and that equals 1. 
All right, so from there, let's have a look at going backwards with this. So if you have x plus 1 squared divided by 81 plus y minus 3 squared divided by 16, and if this equals 1, Writing this back in parametrics equations is actually pretty much the same as what we did before with the circles. So we're going to have x is equal to, square root of 81 is 9, and it's cos theta. And because it's plus 1, inside the brackets on the outside it's going to be minus 1. Then you've got y, which equals square root of 16 is 4, and that's 4 sine theta, and what have you got? Plus 3. All right, guys, so in the next one, I'll be talking about um, hyperbola parametric forms. And if you got the hang of this, um, yeah, you'll, you'll find the hyperbola one pretty easy as well. All right, but that's it from this session. So once again, thanks for watching.